Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verse 6 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we start verse 6, actually verses 6 to 8 deal with Paul's hope in death. Paul has a hope in death. He knows he's going to be martyred now for the sake of Christ at the hands of, uh, of Nero. And now he's expressing to Timothy his hope in his, in his upcoming death. And, you know, deep down, uh, most people are afraid of death, either because of the unknown or because of leaving behind all that they have and all that they're familiar with here on earth. But for a Christian, death should be a welcome enemy that is used to release them from the death and corruption and sin of this life and to propel them into eternity within God's presence. And yet there are Christians who are not really afraid of death, but they are afraid of how they're going to die. But even this is in God's hands. And God has planned how each child will glorify him in death. Remember, the grave has no victory over those whom God has given the victory to through Jesus Christ. Death is the means used by which we are released from the sinful world. Christians are, people are afraid of death. I shouldn't say just Christians, but people are afraid of death because of what's unknown. And yet for the Christian, for the Christian, we shouldn't be afraid of death. We may be afraid of how we're going to die, but not necessarily death. Listen, even, even how we're going to die is in God's hands. And how we're going to die will glorify God. Let God choose how he wants you to glorify him in death. Let God choose the way in which you, you pass from this life into the next in a way that will glorify him. So he says in verse six, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. And he says here, I am ready to be offered. And this Greek word is spendo, S-P-E-N-D long O, spendo. And it's in the present tense, it's in the passive voice, and it's in the indicative mood. And this Greek word was used for the pouring out of drink offerings to a god. The only other place in the word of God where it's used is in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 17. Now, present tense means that day by day, Paul's Paul's life was being poured out. Pours, he says, uh, verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered. So Paul says, day by day, I'm waiting. It could be any day. But I'm waiting to be offered unto God. Passive voice means that he was receiving the action of being poured out. He was not producing he was not producing it himself. And the indicative mood means that it's, actually, it's a real fact. It's actually happening. So Paul says, I am now ready to be offered unto God, poured out unto his, unto his service. Like, like, like an off, like David, when the, when the mighty men went and got the water from the, well, I believe it's in Bethlehem. They came, they got the water. David said, boy, I want a drink from, I'd love to have a glass of water from that, from that well. Well, they went, they heard it and they went and they got it. They fought, they fought the, 
the, the uh, I think the Philistines, uh, I'm sorry, uh, they, they fought an army, they fought people to get to that well. <laughs> and they got the water and they brought it, to, they brought it to David and David, they, you know, they were probably standing around waiting, watching to, they wanted to see uh, David drink that water and, and, and see the enjoyment on his face. And, and instead, David takes the cup and he pours it out. He says, how can I, you guys risked your life. How can I drink this water? I pour it out as an offering unto God, right? And, and Paul here is saying the same thing. God, I'm, I'm pouring out my life. I'm not pouring out. He, actually, it's passive voice. It's he's being poured out as an offering. In a sense, it's almost like God is taking Paul's life and pouring him out as an offering, as a, as a, as a sacrifice unto God. God was in full control of Paul's offering. And Paul saw that his offering was not as an execution, but as an offering of his life unto God. As I said at the very beginning of this whole uh, this lesson uh, on these lessons in Second Timothy, nowhere do you ever see Paul uh, complaining or moaning about how he's being treated or why am I like this and I'm going to get killed and and he's not angry at God, he's not angry at at Nero or any of the any of the people that are persecuting him. He realizes that his time is 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 done. He's got probably a short time to live. And he's not, he's not rejecting or refusing it at all. He's accepting it. And he's seeing it. He's seeing his upcoming uh, execution as actually being a pouring out unto God. Pouring out of his life unto God. And, and, and as, as an offering. As an offering to God. Paul had already died to everything else in this life in Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 through 9 the last offering or the last sacrifice that he would that he would give would be his body and god revealed to paul that the time had come paul knew listen paul knew that he wasn't getting out of prison and he knew that in the end Ultimately, God was in control and that this is God's appointed time for Paul to die. And instead of Paul seeing it as an execution, he saw it as an offering to God. And this is what we need to do in, in, in our life as we contemplate and think about the time when we are going to die. We want, to be, we want it to be as a God, you plan it out. You do it as an offering unto you. I want to give my life as an offering unto you. And instead of saying, well, you know, thinking to ourselves, well, what if I die of horrible cancer and it's pain? Or what if I die this way or that way? And we're thinking of the, the cruelty and the, the pain and the, the ugliness of it. But instead, it's like, God, however, however you choose, I want to give, give my life as an offering unto you, God. Let it, be, let it be in your service. Don't think that your death is a horrible tragedy. Don't think, I'm sorry, don't think of your death as a horrible tragedy or of a great loss to yourself of what you will miss. But think of it as an offering to God. The final great sacrifice that you will give to God. Show your great love to God by allowing God to work out circumstances in your life so that your death will glorify him and be an offering unto God. And that's how Paul saw his life. He didn't complain. He didn't try to wiggle out of getting out of prison. He realized this is my time. This is the time God has chosen for me. And I accept it, and I'm going to see it as an offering unto him. So he says here, For now I am ready to be offered, and the time of my departure, 
departure. Now, this is a very interesting Greek word. This is analuo, analuo. And it means to unloosen something. And it's very interesting that Paul uses this Greek word because there were at least four situ different situations that this word was used in. All right. It's interesting. He says, the time of my departure, the time of my analuo has come. All right. There's four different situations. And the first one is this. It was used when an animal was unyoked from the plow or a cart. And here, death is, death is a rest from toil and burdens. At, at the end of the day, uh, 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 an, an animal, uh, uh, whether it be a, a, a donkey or an oxen or something, when, when you go to the animal at the end of the day of plowing or whatever you're doing and you take that yoke off of them, it's like, it's like the work is over, the toil is over. And Paul saw his death as being a, a deliverance, as a, as a rest from toil, rest from burdens. The second way this Greek word is used is that it was used for loosing bonds or chains of imprisonment. And you know, death is a release from, from literal bonds and imprisonment and also from the bondage of sin and death. Death is a release from being, from being uh, is, is a release of, uh, of being imprisoned to this body of sin, to be, being released from this world, of this world of sin. It's like being, re, being, being set out of, out of prison. The third way it was used is that it was used when the ropes of a tent were loosened. Now, Paul, because of being a tent maker, probably had this in mind when he used this Greek word. But it pictures death as a time to leave, leave this tent or this tabernacle behind and to go on a final journey, his last journey, on the road to heaven to his heavenly home. And we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, deal with our, our heavenly body, the glorified body that he will give us. It's not talking about mansion in heaven. That's different. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 through 4, talks specifically about the glorified body. It's not about our home in heaven. It's about our glorified body. So he uses analuo here. Uh, he uses analuo, and it's probably because he was a tent maker. We're, we're pulling up stakes, and let's go, right? If you're on a journey and you're, you're, you're camping and you want to travel and you're camping, uh, you stay a few days, and then you, you want to go to the other side of the lake or something. All right, let's pull up our tents. You pull up stakes and... And you start, you leave in order to go on a journey to go around the lake. That's what analuo is, to pulling up stakes. And Paul, and that's what death is. Death is, we're leaving, we're pulling up stakes and we're going to our heavenly home. The last way in which it was used, it was when loosing the ropes of a ship from the dock in order to set sail again. They would, they would have the ropes to a, a rope. A ship is tied uh, by ropes to the dock. And when it's time for the ship to leave, you unloosen the ropes and you leave and you go on your journey. And many times Paul traveled by ship preaching the gospel. And now he is ready to set sail out of this life and to dock his boat on the banks of heaven. Look at death, listen, look at death as a journey, as a final being loosed from the chain and the corruption, not only of this world, 
but also from your own sinful body. And death should be a great blessing, not something to be feared. Face it head on, trusting God all the way. And we never know. A number of lessons ago, I said that that eternity is, there's just a thin veil between our life and the next life. And, and death is that, that veil which we pass through. It's our avenue. Death is, is the vehicle that is used for us to pass through this life into the next. And so he says, for I am ready to be offered the time of my departure is at hand. And this Greek word for is at hand is ephistomai. Uh, Ephistomai, and it means the time or the hour has come. Now, because of verse 9 and 21, Paul knew that his time was short. Verse 9 says, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. And verse 21, verse 21 says, do thy diligence to come before winter, right? So because of verses 9 and 21, Paul knew that his time was short. And he was hoping to see Timothy before it came, before it happened. Now, whether Timothy and Mark got there with the things that he wanted them to bring, which we see in verse 13, we don't know. We don't know if they actually made it there on time. We have no idea if, if Timothy or John Mark got there on time before Timothy was executed. But he said, for the time of my departure is close at hand. And, and Paul said, I'm ready to go. I have no fear of death. I know how I'm going to die. Paul knew he was going to be executed. But, but he saw his, his death, his upcoming death, as an offering unto God. And I think that's what we need to do. Don't worry how you're going to die. Just understand that God has already planned it out, how you will glorify God in death. And view your death, view your death as an offering unto God, as Paul did. And when you do, I think we can face it head on trusting God and, and try and see it as a journey, right? See it as a loop being a loose, loosed from the, from the, from the docks of this world. And you're going on a boat trip and you're going to be docking your boat in, on, on the docks of heaven, right? So let's, let's, let's trust God. And, and we don't have to be afraid of death, but we trust him in, in all things concerning how we will glorify him in our when our time comes. All right? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.